Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am very happy to be joined once again by my twin sister Nicole. And today we're going to be talking about the attack on masculinity, but from a bit of a different angle than we've discussed before. I've already made videos in the past establishing the fact that there is a war on men, including their masculinity. However, today Nicole and I want to discuss the motivation behind these attacks. Why exactly is masculinity being attacked? Another question we want to explore is, why is masculinity deemed as something inherently toxic, as a vice when it's in men, but then it's celebrated as something empowering, as a virtue when it's in women? For example, men are constantly encouraged to explore their feminine side by being in tune with their emotions, by openly crying or wearing girly clothing, makeup, or carrying handbags, even by altering the pitch of their voice to sound gentler and more womanly. They're told that beta males are superior to alpha males and that women find men who are sensitive and compliant more attractive, more desirable life partners. They're told that masculine men are dangerous, that masculine men are something from which society needs to be protected. Men are told that they need to step aside, keep their heads down, and let the more capable, more moralistic feminine gender lead. Women, on the other hand, are told that the absolute best example of a strong and empowered woman is one who possesses traditionally male traits, physical strength, a dominant nature, aggressiveness, the ability to lead, the ability to provide for a family. In other words, to be a girl boss. Somehow, our culture has deemed traditionally male traits to be the goal that all women should strive for while completely ignoring all of the traditionally feminine traits that are not only admirable, but that are also an example of strength and should be celebrated. Traits such as being maternal, as being nurturing, compassionate, patient, self-sacrificing, and supportive. In this video, we want to explore not only why masculinity is under attack, but also how the current narrative is actually the most anti-male and anti-female narrative that we have in our society at the moment. It is the narrative that the best man is the man who usurps the traditionally female role, and the best woman is the woman who usurps the traditionally male role. We're going to get into it, but before we do, I just want to take a moment to say that I am extremely happy to once again be partnering with the incredible website and app Ground News. The media landscape is fundamentally broken. We can all see that it's devolved into a game of clickbait headlines wherein media outlets value their financial bottom line as well as their own personal political agendas over reporting the facts. Many of us are sick and tired of the constant misrepresentation and sensationalism. We simply want an apolitical platform that has one goal and one goal only, to keep us informed regardless of our politics. And that's exactly why Ground News is so revolutionary. Ground News has an immense library of sources, featuring over 50,000 outlets from across the world and political spectrum. You can see every side of every side, so you can come to your own conclusions about the news. Furthermore, their blind spot feature enables you to check your news blind spot and see stories that aren't being reported by one side of the political spectrum. If you happen to find that you have become as tired as I have of media outlets constantly pumping their biased news articles into your social media feed under the guise of objectivity, then join me in downloading the Ground News app today. You can download the app completely for free by using my personal link in the video description. To start off, we need to answer the question of why masculinity is being attacked. Of course, femininity is being attacked as well, however, the attack is less blatant and a bit more subversive. For example, you don't normally hear the media or Hollywood say that femininity is bad. Instead, they say that being physically strong, dominant, and a leader are traits that make for the ideal woman. As for masculinity, it's under constant constant siege openly all of the time. The problem is that taking on female traits isn't as alluring to men as taking on male traits is to women, at least in general. It's something that a lot of men have to be propagandized into doing over a long period of time. Anyhow, in my opinion, the primary reason that masculinity is being attacked is because effeminate men are easier to control than masculine men. Masculine men having traits like stoicism, competitiveness, dominance, and aggressiveness aren't going to his easily submit themselves, their countries, and their freedoms to the government. This is also why the nuclear family is being attacked and broken down, using the promotion of ideals such as feminism, birth control, and abortion, because atomized individuals without the strength of a family to 
rely on tend to rely more on the government. Strong, masculine men are also far more capable of defending their countries, their communities, and their families. Even countries like China recognize this. They understand that a decline in masculinity in men will lead to a decline in their nation. Recently, the Chinese Education Ministry issued a notice called the Proposal to Prevent the Feminization of Male Adolescents, and they called on schools to fully reform their offerings on physical education and strengthen their recruitment of teachers. The text advised recruiting retired athletes and people from sporting backgrounds and vigorously developing particular sports like football with a view to cultivating students' masculinity. Last May, a delegate of China's top advisory body said that many of China's young males had become weak, timid, and self-abasing. There was a trend among young Chinese males toward feminization, he claimed, which would inevitably endanger the survival and development of the Chinese nation, unless it was effectively managed. I use China as an example here not to uphold the Chinese regime as an exemplary government. I mention China solely because they haven't forgotten the priceless value of masculine men, which is something that not only the United States, but much of the Western world in general has forgotten. Well, I actually wouldn't say that we have forgotten the value of masculinity. It's more that many of us know the value of it, but we aren't able to promote, nurture, and encourage it without being accused of promoting toxic masculinity or misogyny or even white supremacy. People will disagree with us, of course. There are plenty of people out there who genuinely do believe that traditional masculinity and femininity are bad things. In fact, on the American Psychological Association's website, Stephanie Papa sums up the APA's enemy. Traditional masculinity, marked by stoicism, competitiveness, dominance, and aggression, is, on the whole, harmful. Our job as therapists is, the authors suggest, to remove all but the ideologically sound masculinities from boys and men, and specifically remove masculinities that involve competition, aggression, strength, and power. The goal of a combined institutional effort to fight for a society in which being a man or a woman means nothing, and there is no apparent difference between the sexes, is becoming ever clearer. As a result, we're seeing a decline in our nation, and specifically in our men. The fact that more women are going to college than men. More women are in the workforce than men. Men have a higher suicide rate. Far more men are homeless. Less men than ever want to get married. Men are checking out of real society in favor of escapism, and so on. The truth is, however, that as John Hawkins so accurately states in his article about traditional masculinity, almost everything of worth on this planet was built by traditional masculinity. Aggression, strength, and power. The great industrialists, generals, inventors, heroes, and leaders are almost all traditional men. If you're in America, you're in a nation founded by traditional men that exists because traditional men were willing to use violence to protect it. Reading about this on an invention created by traditional men. You can go on and on with this, and the point is not to denigrate women who were prevented from reaching their full potential for a long time. It's to note that the contributions of traditional men are so important, overwhelming, and ever-present that we may take them for granted like a fish, not realizing that it's swimming in water. On that note, since it fits in so well with the theme of this video, I wanted to quickly give a shout out to a new up-and-coming channel that I recently discovered, which explores a lot of male themes and issues. For those interested, it's called Rewire the West, and it has beautifully made and narrated videos that I think a lot of you will enjoy. This isn't a sponsorship or anything like that, I just genuinely do like the YouTube channel, and I think that many of you will as well. Instead of tearing men down, we should be appreciating the vital and irreplaceable role that they have played in shaping society. Mothers should encourage masculinity in their sons by not smothering them with overprotectiveness, by letting them be bold and daring and adventurous, by teaching them about honor, loyalty, and respect. Women should appreciate and admire masculine traits in their brothers, male friends, and husbands. His ambition, his desire to work and achieve, to take on the challenges of the world. They should appreciate his desire to protect, defend, and provide. They should admire and support 
toward his dreams, his noble ambitions, his desire to repair and build, all of these things are worthy of admiration. When men are permitted to reach their full potential, they become great leaders, brave soldiers, and loving husbands and fathers. Open any history book and you will find countless examples of men who changed the world. Rather than telling men to deny their own natures, as a society, we should be encouraging them to embrace the powerful force that is masculinity. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Before we go, we just wanted to let you know that if you would like to support our work, there are separate links for each of us in the description of this video. Also, if you haven't already, please pick up a copy of my latest book, Patriots Not Welcome, which is a memoir about all of my political experiences since 2016. You can get a signed copy on the homepage of my website if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, or you can get a regular paperback or Kindle copy on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Thank you so much again for watching. We really hope you enjoyed, and we will see you all soon.